Hi guys, uh, today I want to show you how to do a clean install uh, for Ubuntu Linux uh, on a desktop or laptop. Now uh, this guide is a complete guide so I'll show you how to uh, download and burn the ISO as well. Um, so if you've already done all that, perhaps skip ahead to the Ubuntu screens uh, to the actual install process. Uh, okay, now Ubuntu Linux, just a little bit about it. It's open source, which means it's uh, free to obtain, use, or modify. That's the world's most popular free operating system, and rightly so. It's it's an excellent operating system. Uh, it's backed by canonical software, Mark Shuttleworth. Um, he's kind of like the uh, business angel for it, and he backs it with his uh, with his millions. Uh, runs well on older hardware and excellent on newer hardware so it doesn't really matter uh, what type of computer you've got it'll run really well um, now the support is is probably the key thing about uh, Ubuntu it's got great uh, community in other words free support but it's also got paid support uh, which is good for business users and Ubuntu is everything from your basic desktop operating system right up to uh, enterprise servers so uh, it's the whole hog there so uh, let's see all right now this is a uh, this guide is a clean install all right and the clean install will completely wipe your hard drive uh, so if you've got Windows or any other operating system this is not a dual boot system this is a dual boot guide this is a clean install so it will delete everything on your hard drive that means your your photos uh, documents and all that so what you need to do before that is to manually back up your personal data before proceeding any further uh, now I've, I've got a, a guide on that um, it's it's a little different like Windows backup and restore and when uh, system recovery disks system recovery disks are really only for the system so you're not going to get any of your personal pers personal data on that uh, but for newer installs windows 7 windows 8 um, there's windows backup and restore now that does back up everything including your system uh, and it does put your files in a hierarchy but it puts it in a container file and it's it's a real pain in, pain in the butt to um, uh, to get it out and to restore it uh, on anything except a Windows computer so really Windows Backup and Restore isn't suitable uh, as a backup when you're moving to Linux or another operating system so I'll just quickly go through it with you uh, what you're going to need to, to back up um, you'll need a, a USB flash drive um, but what would be preferential is an external USB hard drive which is the second picture there um, they're a lot cheaper they're faster and you can get much more space on an external USB hard drive than you can with a flash drive the flash drives are convenient they're easy but they're slower and much more expensive uh, now obviously whatever you buy either one you're going to need enough capacity to hold your personal data um, now it's a little bit hard but um, to, to show you how to do that so if, if you need to do that visit my uh, guide how to manually back up your files folder and, folder and data uh, because I show you exactly how to calculate what, uh, how much room you'll need um, now manual backup you basically copy and paste your data onto the, the USB drive okay so you're going to need a, a DVD burner uh, enable to uh, burn the ISO image that we're going to download in a minute um, in the destination computer or the computer that you're installing Ubuntu on you'll need at least a DVD ROM which is a DVD player doesn't burn discs um, but look if, if your computer was made uh, 2008 or newer it'll most likely have a DVD burner in it so you're probably safe uh, you're going to need a, a blank optical uh, DVD disc not CD uh, I've also got a guide on how to burn an ISO image to optical disc because it's a little different than just burning um, data alright now I want to download Ubuntu so open up your browser and visit ubuntu.com and on their menu up there 
uh, on the far right you'll see the download menu item so we mouse over that and then we click on the desktop item all right now uh, the choices they've got here well, they only have the LTS option now which is long-term support all right, in other words the it's got uh, I think two years of guaranteed support um, now in terms of which flavor they call it uh, you should download um, if your computer was made on 2012 or after and has two or more gigabyte of memory then you're safe to download the 64-bit version if um, your computer is less than that or has less than two gig memory then choose the 32-bit all right if you don't know and you're unable to uh, find out choose the 32-bit because that will install on almost everything so um, the 64-bit will only install on 64-bit hardware alrighty click the download button when you're ready now it brings to it brings you to a screen where you can donate if you like um, it's up to you if not click the no not now take me to the download link and that should pop up in a tick now this is what's called a direct browser download okay um, if you have a solid ADSL connection that never cuts out then you're uh, you're probably safe to, to download in this fashion uh, it's, it's almost a, a gigabyte file there um, but if you have a, a connection that cuts out frequently um, or if you're, you're on one of those mobile broadband plans um, then you're better off choosing the the um, BitTorrent download which if you go back to the original screen um, it should have it for alternative downloads there so click that on and the BitTorrent one there is what you're after uh, again same rules with the 32 and 64 bit all right um, so once you've downloaded then we'll get on to burning the ISO image now in Windows 7 and 8 and 8.1 uh, it's an ISO file there with that icon it's as simple as right clicking once you put your blank DVD in the DVD drive then right click and you'll see an item there that says burn disk image all right so you just click that on leave it at defaults and it'll burn um, for XP Vista you're, you'll need to download um, what's called ISO recorder or free ISO burner uh, that should be on your screen now um, now once you once you've installed them again you right click on the ISO file uh, it won't be there it'll be down a bit and it'll say burn image to disk okay so just choose that leave it at defaults and it should be right uh, if you run Mac OS X um, you'll, you've got a built-in disk utility that'll burn ISO images uh, if you're on Linux use K K3B CD record or grow ISO FS and uh, yeah I've got a guide on uh, how to burn an ISO image to disk so visit that now just a reminder to back up your files and data again if you haven't um, be sure to and if you're not sure then it's probably not a good idea to continue okay all right clean installs so now pop the uh, Ubuntu disk into your DVD drive and uh, reboot or restart now if if it's stuck or you can't get it to restart uh, just press and hold the power button until it turns off uh, wait about five seconds and then click it again and it should boot up now hopefully uh, probably 70% of computers will boot the DVD drive first okay that's what you want um, but 30 about around 30% won't now if you're one of those 30% you've got two choices um, if uh, when, when you first press your power button there's a black screen with text that comes up now there should be instructions there to either enter the boot menu which would be 
pref pre preferential, okay, because um, uh, it's, it's easier than enter entering the BIOS. So that'll be something like press escape to enter boot menu. Now when you reach that, uh, choose to boot from the DVD drive and, uh, and it should be fine. Now if, you're not, if you don't have a boot menu um, choice, you're going to have to, and it's still booting into Windows or it's skipping over the DVD, you're going to have to enter your BIOS, which is basic input output system, and change the boot menu to um, boot from the DVD drive first. All right. Um, again, when you first boot your computer up, there should be instructions on the screen down how to enter the BIOS, and it'll be press F1 or delete or F12, something like that. Um, and then you'll enter it in there. It'll usually be one of the, the last options, the, the boot menu. Uh, but again, you want the DVD to boot first. So once you've got that done, um, we boot into Ubuntu. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll go through, I've got a virtual box here, and we'll kick it up. And I've got a uh, uh, an Ubuntu disk installing there. Now it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is 13.10, but they've just released uh, 14 there. Now, let's see. Okay, so the first screen that comes up is uh, you can actually try Ubuntu. So if if you just want to try it out first, it'll run as a live CD. But as this is the install and clean install uh, of Ubuntu, we click the install Ubuntu item there. Now it'll run an automatic check to see if you've got enough space on your uh, hard drive. So it needs at least 5.9 gig gigabyte, which uh, most of you will have. And it needs to be connected to the internet, so uh, that's important too. If you're not connected, then obviously um, connect it up and you can go back and it'll re recheck if you're connected. This option here, download updates while installing, do not select that. Okay, Installing an operating, the, the, the way I see it, is installing an operating system is hard enough uh, without adding a whole lot of downloads uh, on top of it. So you can do that after it's installed, there's really no uh, no reason to do that, so please don't check that one. This one you do want to check, which is install third-party software. Okay, so go ahead and check that one because you want to be able to play MP3 files and, and flash files and things like that. So once you've selected that, click continue. Now, uh, the first option will be selected by default, uh, or it should be, which is erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now, um, that's just leave that at, at uh, the default there. Um, uh, choosing any of the others is, is advanced settings. We're not doing that. All we're doing is installing the basic system. So just leave that at erase disk and install Ubuntu. Click install now. And that will format the disk in uh, a Linux format and create the partitions that uh, you need to, including a home partition. Uh, select your time zone, which, uh, which is Los Angeles. Now, for most of you, again, um, it'll be English US for your keyboard and English US for your language. Uh, obviously, there, there are some of you out there who, are, who have different languages, so you choose which one you want. And then uh, click Continue. Now, it'll uh, ask you for basic details here. So just pop them in. So you put uh, your full name in there, and it'll shorten it for the username. Um, second option there is your computer's name. Uh, 
probably best just to leave that unless you really don't want your name in there um, you can name it anything you like so something descriptive and username uh, lowercase and uh, just leave that as your first name, I would say, unless you're having uh, a lot of other users. Pop in your password. Um, <clears throat> now, probably best to leave it at require my password to log on, but if you want to just boot it up automatically, and if there's not many people in your house that you're worried about, then you can choose log in automatically. Otherwise, uh, require my password. Now encrypt my home folder just be aware that that's great for security but um, if anything ever happens uh, it will be incredibly hard to, to recover uh, your data if you haven't backed up unencrypted onto a, an external drive so if you're good at backing up and you regularly back up unencrypted then that's fine you can encrypt your home folder but otherwise leave that unchecked. Click continue. Now this part here, um, Ubuntu One is, uh, they offer a whole lot of free services, um, free storage online, but again, you, you don't want to be doing this while uh, setting up a user account when you're installing an operating system. It's it's a little bit too much in my, my opinion anyway. So just choose the login later button down there and you can always set up the, um, the Ubuntu One account um, at, at a later stage once it's installed. Okay, so it'll now go through a whole lot of screens uh, letting you know different features about Ubuntu and it should take, on, on newer computers it should take about um, uh, 30 minutes to install. Older computers will take longer. Okay, so I'll pause now and I'll pick it up at the end. Okay, so we've gone through the uh, install screens and Ubuntu has finished installing. So what we do now is we click the Restart Now button and that should automatically pop out the, uh, the Ubuntu DVD disk. Okay, so we're on the desktop now. If uh, At this point uh, it's probably good to do some software updates for the system. So you click on the, uh, that icon up there on the top left, which is our search feature, and type in software update. And this item here, software updater, is the one we want. So click that on. And it will go ahead and search for updates. You can uh, just leave it at defaults, and it will download an update just the same that uh, Windows does. It's pretty straightforward. So congratulations on uh, installing Ubuntu and if you have any questions or comments just leave them um, in the comment sections below and uh, I'll answer them for you. Okay, cheers guys. Bye.